Hello everyone, it is Tom Karatza and we are about to go through the process to rent out a property and the reason that we are doing that is over the last few weeks for whatever reason, we've been asked a lot by different people who happen to have a property that they're going to rent out if they should hire like a real estate agent and pay someone to rent it out or if they could do it themselves and at this point in Ontario with rental demand it's where it's at. If you understand the process, we think you should just rent it out yourself because then you're learning the whole thing and it's really important to understand how how this works. We think it's really valuable to understand how to rent out a property by yourself. Even if you're busy, we think at least one time you should do this. You learn so much. So in this podcast, we have mapped out the steps that you're going to take, you know, from the different advertisements and checking credit and the Ontario Standard Lease Agreement and the whole bit from the start to the finish. So hopefully this podcast serves as a little bit of a guide and you do need some expertise around you. So if you have any questions at this uh, about this process, reach out to somebody you trust, a, a lawyer, a a paralegal, a real estate agent, uh, us here at Rockstar, we do all this stuff all the time. Um, so make sure if you do have questions, you're reaching out to someone who has experience and who knows this stuff. But in general, it's pretty straightforward. So in this podcast, together with myself and Mike DeZormo, who has been with us forever here at Rockstar, a really great guy, worked with tons of investors on millions of dollars of investment property. Um, we share some of the processes and some of the strategies that we've used over the years to rent out properties. So hopefully you enjoy this. And if you are listening to this and you want to understand real estate investing for yourself or how we are investing with investors from, from all over Ontario in areas all over Southern Ontario, the Golden Horseshoe, Toronto, and all the surrounding areas of Toronto, basically from like Belleville to Barrie to London to uh, Niagara, that whole kind of region, you can come out to one of our training classes. That's like an introduction training class where we do, where we share some of the latest strategies that we're using. And and you can get a seat for that at CanadianRealEstateTraining.com. So you can get a seat for that at CanadianRealEstateTraining.com. And the reason it's in your best interest to register, we always fill that class up. So if you uh, if you register yourself there, Jenny or Anthony from our offices will call and confirm the date, the location, all the details with you. It really helps out, it helps us out if you register, just so we know how many people to, and we can anticipate how to set up set things up on our, our end. And that's at Canadian Real Estate Training. Com. Typically, my, both myself and Nick are there. Sometimes it's just one of us. Usually, I'm giving that particular class and we go through all the latest strategies on how we're working with investors right now here in the Golden Horseshoe area. And with that, let's get on with the show. Are you ready to live life on your terms? Is it time to take charge? Real estate, business building, the economy, health and nutrition, and more. It's the Your Life, Your Term Show with Tom and Nick Carazza. Are you ready? Let's go. We are live. We are live. Time out. Mike is already done. 75% of his <laughs> nitro cold brew. I have a regular cold brew and I'm only done 10% of my regular cold brew. And part of the reason is Mike convinced me to get a nitro cold brew from Starbucks yesterday. I drank more than three quarters of this stuff before we did a podcast that hasn't been released yet. I was, I already speak quickly. <laughs> I was speaking, I could barely hang on a to my own minute. Yeah, yeah. I could barely hang on to my own body. <laughs> that was con completely crazy. I don't know how you're, yeah. if you're listening to this and you haven't tried a nitro cold brew, first of all, Starbucks doesn't sell them in venti. Correct. Right. Just yeah. tall and grande. Illegal. Illegal. It's, <laughs> it's illegal. illegal. It's illegal. Ask them. Yeah. Hey, look. Starbucks barista, why are you not selling me this in a venti? And the reason Remember I asked when we were downtown Toronto the other day, I'm like, no, I wanted it in a venti. She's like, no, I'm not allowed. Yeah, didn't she also say, I'm not allowed to sell you this before 10 a.m.? I heard that at one Starbucks, but that was that we've yeah. dismissed as yeah, I think myth. that was urban legend. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> because like, what the heck is in these things like this yeah. nit nitrogen infused cold brew? Yeah, it only at a select few um, Starbucks as well. That's right. Yeah, yeah. and it comes out like a, it looks like a Guinness coming out of the yeah. tap. <laughs> so it comes out of this tap, they give it to you. If you haven't had one before, and if you haven't been drinking coffee regularly, hang on for the ride. <laughs> <laughs> on this thing. <laughs> Holy crap, uh, man. And if you like it a little bit sweet like I do, um, add sweet cream to it. Yeah, that's yeah. blasphemy to me. So I didn't <laughs> yeah, add I know. the sweet cream, but uh, <laughs> whoa. So today I have like a, I feel like I've downgraded to a regular cold brew, which is already pretty strong. But yeah. uh, that nitro stuff, 
I gotta admit, man, I'm I'm slightly scared. <laughs> okay. Anyway, listen, priorities here. Let's get on with this thing. Right. So uh, the idea with this show is this episode is to break down uh, leasing out a property, renting out a property yourself. I can't tell you the number of times where. Uh, Neighbors of mine, friends of Mike's, people we know will ask us and say, hey, you know what? Can I like hire a rock star to uh, rent out a property? And uh, it's fair. You can hire a real estate person, a real estate agent, you know, go through a brokerage and do it and pay the, what is what is it, Mike, one month's rent? Yeah. Yep. One month's rent to do it. Um, but right now with demand for property so strong and uh, the process so pretty simple in Ontario, I think you can do it yourself. Yeah, it's really easy. Yeah, there's no need. To me, there's no need. So I walked my neighbors through it. They did a great job of it. Um, you've been talking, I think, to multiple people about it. It's actually something we teach here at Rockstar as part of the Rockstar Inner Circle membership, but we're working in with investors. And we go actually into it pretty deep. But I think today we'll cover off some of the bases just to give everyone um, an overview. So I started with, Mike, I started with ads mm -hmm. as the first thing. Yeah. Is that where you think we start yeah, this yeah. conversation? Yeah, I think that's fair for sure. Okay, so I'll run this by you. You tell me what you think. So the first thing is once you have a property, whether it's a straight rental, doesn't matter if it's a condo. Actually, Mike, I want to ask you about uh, doing an open house in a condo. I don't know mm -hmm. if you've done that stuff before. Have not, but I've seen it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So condo, straight rental as a townhome, house, semi-detached, whatever, rent to own kind of investment property, um, a duplex kind of thing, a student rental, it doesn't matter. The most overlooked thing by most people are signs. And the reason for that is Kijiji is so good at getting the word out on rental properties that most people dismiss signage. But I can tell you multiple times we've had people tell us that they haven't been able to rent, th rent out their property as fast as they had hoped. And they finally went out at our encouragement and to go put a sign in the lawn that the property was available and magically a couple days later someone uh, responds and says oh my gosh I've been driving in this area forever or my parents live across the street and I wanted to rent out something didn't know this was available so do not dismiss a good rental sign in the freaking lawn of the property what, talk what, about a, yeah a qualified lead like that's somebody that's probably they had to either drive by or you're right. Uh, somebody was calling them saying, Hey, there's a sign in my neighborhood for this house is for lease. Like the people are already familiar with that particular area. That's how they saw the sign. So that's a very qualified lead. They always tend to be great leads when they call yeah. off those freaking signs. I don't mm -hmm. know why I'm saying freaking signs. Yeah. I'm mad at the sign. Yeah. Anyway, I remember, uh, we had an investor, he had a property in Barrie as he was hammering in his for lease sign, a lady walked down the street and said, I wanted to see the house. But he wanted, he was putting the sign in the lawn, but I think it was like a Friday, but he wasn't going to show until Saturday or Sunday because he just wanted to do a little bit of cleaning up. He just took possession, just putting the sign into the ground. He's like, no, no, the house is not ready. You got to come back at the Saturday or Sunday whenever he was showing it. She's like, no, no, no. She insisted. She's like, I live down the street. This is what I'm paying. I want to see your place. In the end, he showed her and it was a done deal. I, I can't tell you, we've had similar things. Nick and I were once putting in directional signs. So we didn't put in just the sign. We put in those little directional signs mm -hmm. pointing to the house. And in one corner, somebody was ripping our signs out and they were pissed <laughs> off at us that we were putting our directional <laughs> sign. On another corner, we're putting it in the corner and the guy walks over saying, same kind of thing. Hey, I know someone who's trying to move into this area. Where mm -hmm. is your, where exactly is your house? Yeah. So literally on one corner, someone's pissed at us. Another <laughs> corner, we're basically renting it out. So little directional signs to the property as well. And there's different bylaws and stuff around that. That. Yeah, can't leave them out for so long in different communities and things like that. But yeah. they're really, really helpful. Right. Yeah. Um, and um, Mike, I don't know where what your thoughts on, are on this, but there, you just go to different print shops. Mm -hmm. Usually, yep. different your local ones. They're pretty yeah, competitive just nowadays. Just Google up a sign company and you can get these signs. Exactly. And you buy yeah. a metal post at the same uh, same yeah. place. Usually, yeah. Stick that in the ground. Yeah. If it's the middle of winter, yeah. be prepared for having to be the world's strongest human to get that into the lawn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, okay. And then, of course, there's Kijiji. Mm -hmm. What do you tell people about Kijiji? Any Is it just like basic, yeah. put the listing up there? Like put the, sorry. The, yeah, well, we did a split test on this too. So we did uh, the unpaid ad where you just go in and post your ad for free. And then what happens is the next person to post after you, then your ad gets bumped down. So what we tell investors is, you know, if you're going to go the free route, um, be cognizant and watch your ad because once it goes beyond page five, you're sort of lost in the abyss. And you know, you're going to get more leads if you keep your ad in between pages one, two, five. So our test was, okay, well, let's throw a free ad up and then let's do a paid ad. 
and the paid ad stays at the top. You rotate from page to page, but you're basically at the top of the page. And we were getting three times the amount of leads on the paid ad versus the unpaid ad. Got it. So okay. Was, and do you remember that paid ad? How much you, cause I know there's different levels of paid ads. Mm-hmm. Do you know how much you were paying for that? Paid ad? I'm going to guess it was about 50 bucks a week. Yeah, Kijiji okay. keeps changing. They're going okay. up, not down, but yeah. I it's, know. Remember a, when it was like two bucks to yeah, bump yourself yeah, to yeah, the yeah. top of Kijiji? But compare this to, remember when we were paying for newspaper ads? Oh. It was like 500 bucks for a couple of weeks, I think. It was crazy. And yeah. then if you wanted to add in a picture. Yeah, that's and right. It was insane. Yeah. Kijiji's, yeah. it's funny because we can help investors buy a prop, an investment property for 500,000. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we fail at convincing them to spend 50 bucks yeah. on advertising <laughs> their property for rent. It's yeah. like amazing. Yeah, yeah. They buy a property for half a million dollars. Right, they won't right. spend 50 bucks to advertise <laughs> the property. Yeah. I'm not going to buy a sign. That's 150 bucks right there. Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, so yeah. So the paid one really pulled that much mm-hmm. more. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then what about the actual property? Like, basic pictures, yeah. basic, anything, any tips on that? Yeah, I think you, you, you uh, obviously, yeah, the, the more pictures you have, the better. Um, the description, you don't want to sound like a typical realtor in your ad. You want to, you know, paint a, a picture through words of, of creating emotion, emotional appeal to the house. Um, the biggest mistake is definitely if you're using a photo that's not relevant to the season that you're trying to fill. So right now we're in the middle of summer. If you put a photo up and there's snow on the front lawn, because that's when, you know, that's your latest photo of the property, people are going to wonder what's wrong with that house. Like, why isn't it filled? Even though that ad might be brand new, the se- the photo doesn't reflect the season. And you might think that's ridiculous listening to this, but yeah. we've seen that oh, yeah. multiple yeah. times. <laughs> Especially yeah. if you live in like Etobicoke or somewhere and the property's in Guelph yeah. and the last picture you have is from the winter yeah. and you just stick <laughs> that property up there. Yeah. Oh, sorry, that picture up there. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Match it to the season. Yeah. What about the actual uh, write up anything? Pretty basic stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just again, yeah. Don't sound like the typical realtor. And I, I like to provide multiple means of them, the prospective tenants getting a hold of you. So reply to this email. Here's my cell number. Um, some people are a little reluctant to give out cell numbers, but really... I, I've never had an issue. I've been doing this, you know, we've been doing this for a long time and never had the same here. Like, we, giving out this cell phone any issues. No. And there's a couple other services like some that come to mind are ring yeah. central. Yeah. Uh, if you just want to buy yourself another phone number. Yeah. And I know, I forget one of them. E-voice. My, e-voice. Another yeah. one. Now another there's one, text now. Textnow.com, which yeah. actually has a little app. So I haven't used that one myself, but a couple of people here at Rockstar use it and they say the outbound call will mask your cell phone mm-hmm. and it'll look like you're calling from whatever your textnow.com phone number is, yeah. which is kind of handy because sometimes, you know, people are a little timid to mm-hmm. hand out their cell phone number. You and I really haven't yeah. been, right? but uh, that's kind of handy for some people. I think people enjoy that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then that free phone line.ca free phone line.ca. Yeah. yeah another, another, one. another one. And yeah. they all have pros and cons yeah. and different things, but yeah. there's tons of phone services. Mm-hmm. But every time we've tested putting multiple ways to respond in any ad, we've always got more leads. Mm-hmm. So to your point in Kijiji, yeah, offer a phone, even though it's on Kijiji, right. offer a phone number as yeah. a way to communicate with you. For sure. Some people will call you, some will text you, some will email you. Yeah. Yeah. It's just yeah. their prefer- preferred means of uh, communication. And then it, there's a couple investors we've worked with over the years that have done some pretty cool stuff. And we've played around with this ourselves as well, that if you really wanted to go to the next level, and right now rental demand is so strong right across Ontario, you don't need to do this. But um, some people have really gotten good at running Facebook ads mm-hmm. to their yeah. Uh, property ad and you can you you know you can build a little website so the way this would work if I was to break it down is let's say you're going to buy multiple properties over the next few years you can go to something like wix.com which is wix.com or squarespace.com or I think GoDaddy has website builders you can build a two three page website that just has some pictures of your property it's it's basically like your own private little Kijiji ad Mm -hmm. that you've built and you get a domain name like, you know, one, two, three, four, mystreet.com. And you put up your two page website that has some contact information, some pictures of the property. Then you go to Facebook and you run geographic based advertising. So let's say your property's in Mississauga. You run this ad just so people kind of in the area can see it. And that limits down the budget that you would need to get really exposure. And you might throw like a hundred bucks on this ad to test how many people click over to it. And we've seen, a lot of people have some really good success at running Facebook ads in a geographic area. So the ad's only shown to that geography and which you can put into the Facebook ad little interface and uh, drive all kinds of traffic 
to your mm -hmm. own website. And it's basically, your own website, again, is just basically almost a mirror of whatever you put on Kijiji, same pictures. And some of these services now, like Squarespace and Wix, they're pretty easy to mm -hmm. use. Like, yeah. it's not, not difficult. We had an investor recently uh, post in the Facebook community. Have you seen that? Where it's like sales that are going on in your community? Got it. I don't think I've yeah, seen that. A gentleman you know very well, actually. Okay. And he had a, a, a flurry of, of leads come from that. Okay, got yeah, it. Posting in the Facebook community group or I'm not exactly sure I'm not an avid user of Facebook but yeah okay so like in his in the community page for that area yeah he posted this free. home was yeah. for rent yep. yeah smart. wasn't a paid for ad smart. and then uh, I remember we I don't, and I don't remember how but we were able to get the back end analytics for Kijiji and when houses for rent were most often viewed and that time was between 12 and 1 I guess when people are on their lunch break and then from 5 p.m. to 10. So I guess they're off huh. work, they're at home. Um, but th those were spikes, spikes in traffic for people viewing homes for lease. I forgot about that. Yeah. 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 So if you're going to post it fresh, yeah. you can post it right at like 5 p.m. Right. So you have those hours where people are looking and you're yeah, really at the you, top of the list. Exactly, yeah. yeah. yeah got it. Okay. So I, And I think the, the attitude with your advertising of your property is the more the better. Like mm -hmm. do the sign in the lawn, do directionals if you really want to get crazy, do Kijiji. Yeah. You don't have to go to the whole Facebook thing unless you did the Facebook community like you were mm -hmm. talking about because that's just posting it in the community. You're not yeah. doing like a Facebook ad that might be advanced for some people. Mm -hmm. And use some of these websites if you want to build your own little website about your property or properties that you have available for rent. Yeah, just pepper the market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's the ads. Mm -hmm. Next step, I think where I see some people go completely wrong is the follow-up. Because mm -hmm. let's say you're going to go to the property Nick and I, a lot of times we'll do two, like one day during the week and one, one, sorry, one day in time during the week, one day in time on the weekend. If we're really trying to rent out a place, sometimes it might even be two during the week, but usually it's one weekday option, one weekend option. Um, and what we would do is if we, if you speak to somebody like on a Monday, but you're not going to be at the property until Thursday, we would always call or text the day before to remind people that we're going to be at the property that day or even the morning of if we're going to be there that night. That's huge. It's so huge, right? Yeah. Y you you suggest the same thing. Yeah, people are busy. You know, you've spoken to somebody and, and you know, they've, they've reached out to your ad, they want to see your property, you've called them at a time that maybe they're driving in their car and they're trying to remember the date and time that you said you were going to be there. And let's, let's face it, everybody's busy. I can't remember the last time I was bored. Yeah, <laughs> there's nothing to yeah, look at yeah. on the internet. Yeah. I have read the, one of my friends once about 10 years ago, maybe more. Uh, he, he, he emailed me once when I was uh, uh, at work and said, I have read the internet <laughs> because I'm officially bored. Yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. But yeah, or there's people are scribbling, uh, you know, appointments down on uh, pieces of paper and whatnot. Like look at nowadays, like the, the dentists have paid full-time people to call you to remind you of your dental appointment coming up. So yes, you're absolutely right. Your conversions of people coming out will be much higher if you call just to remind people because often they're forgetting about that appointment. Yeah, and I find when you call, because everyone's scared to call for whatever reason, but when you call people to remind them, and if you're if you can just be personal and normal on the phone, mm -hmm. it goes such a long way to yeah. building rapport. Yeah, um, it's brilliant. I yeah, find for sure, um, and that matters. I think a little more when you're doing some more unique strategies with investment properties. So for example, with our rent to own strategy, calling and building rapport with people before they get to the property, because sometimes you'll answer a couple of questions and yeah. things like that. It really goes a long way because then they're warm. Yeah. You know, it's much friendlier when they're at the property. It's huge. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So follow up mandatory day yeah. of or day before you have to do it. Yeah. And that call is just very casual. Like, hey, it's Mike. Just wanted to make sure you can still make it out to the property tomorrow at 6 p.m. You know, I'm coming from out of town. I got two little kids. If you can't make it, can you do me a huge favor? Can you let me know? Here's my cell number. And yeah. Yeah, that it, point about coming from out of town, can you let me know, really yeah. is huge because that tells people you're making the effort. Can you please make the effort to let yeah. me know if you can't make it? Right. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. And, and then and when you're setting that appointment, not make it sound like you're doing an open house. Like, hey, I'm going to be there tomorrow at 6. Just, you know, if you can make it out. Yeah, hanging out. I'm going to be there from <laughs> yeah. 6 to 10. I got nothing better to yeah, do. Yeah, because now there's no commitment from that other side, from that prospective tenant. The tenant knows, well, he's going to be there anyway. So if I don't show up, no big deal. Meanwhile, that might have been your only lead that particular day. 
So let's make it like we're setting an appointment for a particular person for a particular time, but we're trying to get everybody there also at the same time. And we're, so Mike, you just hit on one of the biggest little quote unquote secrets that I think we stumbled upon that we share with everyone is that always make appointments. Doesn't matter if it's a student rental, a straight rental, we tell everyone, hey, look, this is an appointment. I'm coming out especially for specifically for you. There are going to be a couple other people at the place at that time. It's the only time I can make it out there. So there are going to be some other people there just to give you a heads up. That way they're not caught mm-hmm. off guard. Um, but we make it an appointment for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. Because uh, we, you're kind. I wouldn't even. I don't even. You wouldn't even that. go that far. No, just. And I think in the past, which is fair, we we haven't. Yeah. You know, so maybe I'm case by case on yeah. whether I'm I'm going to share that or not. Right. Right. Um, but the, you and I have both been showing properties when um, the the person thinks they're the only person, and you set them a, like 45 minutes apart and stuff. But mm-hmm. if you get three or four people at the property at the same time, yeah. It's magic yeah. on the response. Uh, it, it, the decision making of the possible yeah. tenant is so much faster. The amount they're willing to pay yeah. is so much higher. Yeah. Like not so much higher. I'm not doubling yeah, the rent, yeah, but yeah. it just means I get less questions about the yeah. rent. Um, it I, really is huge. I remember years ago, I bought my uh, back. I bought an R- Acura RSX from the dealership. It was the manager's demo car, and I was sitting in there. We're negotiating, and I'm like, I don't know. And he's like, Well, this gr- this girl was in here earlier. And uh, she's coming back with her parents. And I'm like, oh, it's almost six o'clock Damn. or nine o'clock, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Like, no, nah, she's not is she coming. really coming back. Yeah, maybe I'll come yeah, back tomorrow. You son and of behold, a <laughs> yeah. He goes, oh, there she is. And she was walking through the door with her parents and the, the place was about to close. And I'm like, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, it's the guy's sister. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, coming come with his take parents. Dinner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about that too. So, but um, yeah, like on the spot with this auction like environment, we now have tenants. This didn't happen before when we first started, but then now they're e-transferring deposits on the spot. That happened with a triplex recently in Kitchener. No way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Damn. Kevin Tall. Yeah. Damn. On so the they're spot. e-transferring while yeah. they're talking. Yeah, they see other people there. And then you're, you don't say you're it. willing to ret- refund it if you don't proceed with yeah. it. Because you haven't done any tenant credit exactly, checks. Exactly, yeah. Stuff. We still got to do our due diligence. Okay. On our end but they're yes. sending it to you. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, it's great. Do you accept the money? Yes. <laughs> yeah, Okay. <laughs> All right. So, okay. So follow up. And then, yeah, it's not open houses. It's always appointment. Mm -hmm. Um, And then just the appointment uh, strategy works for student rentals as well. One time Nick and I were renting out a student rental property. We're driving down there constantly. We just broke down and said, okay, you know what? The next time we do this, we'll just make an appointment. We had about four. uh, That's where it was a light bulb moment for us. We had like 40 students on the front lawn and we rented out the house in 45 minutes instead of like four to five days of going yeah. back and forth. And ever since then, on doesn't matter what strategy, it's always everyone at the property the same. We held all the students outside in January. Jeez, in freezing yeah. cold, yeah. and we're like forcing yeah. everyone. And I was pretending I'm the bouncer at the front door <laughs> while Nick's doing the tours through the house. Um, that really, really works. Mm-hmm. So, um, And then just basic stuff too. I think we always tell to everyone like turn on all the lights Mm -hmm. like if there's like a crawl space in the basement turn on the little light in the crawl space like Mm -hmm. the the furnace room light like turn everything on if there's a fireplace turn it on like open the curtains make it bright like this might sound basic but you and i have both been to properties where you're walking around it's dark and dull inside the windows are like get get some fresh air if the property's Mm -hmm. been locked up yeah get some fresh air in the property Mm -hmm. like make it like you're you, you you respect the property. Yeah, and respectful of them. Don't play Mr. or Mrs. Realtor. Like let them be. Open up the door, greet them, let them roam the house. You hang out in the kitchen. Don't follow them, ride their coattails throughout the house telling them how beautiful something is. Just let them be. Let them see if they like it. Which they usually do. Which they do. I always used to love that when people would follow you around. Like, yeah. look at this uh, bedroom and look at this closet. You know, this closet. This closet's much bigger than most closets in uh, in this area. You know, like, oh my god, leave me alone. Uh-huh. But uh, yeah, and then um, we always just hang out in the kitchen, like you're saying, because yeah. that's naturally where everyone gravitates back mm-hmm. to, and that's where then you can have the conversation. Yeah. Um, Okay, and then for some properties, again, I'll, I'll take this particular method back to a rent-to-own strategy specifically. We used sign-in sheets mm-hmm. because we just wanted to track who was coming. We wanted to do some follow-up. I don't know if, um, yeah, we can get into that. That's something um, at Rockstar as part of the Rockstar Runner Circle membership we run. We run classes on some of those specific strategies, but sign-in sheets have always been um, really useful to us as well. But I just want to make one other point that uh, we show the properties vacant. 
Like mm-hmm. we generally don't stage yeah. any property. No, we no. usually have the appliances in there, but uh, sometimes not even the appliances. Mm-hmm. But most of the time, appliances are in there. But other than that, it's just completely vacant. Yeah, there's never been an issue. Never an issue. Yeah. Um, and then you can always have some people who challenge you about like rent prices and like different questions. Mm-hmm. And usually, I found when anyone kind of questions me on that kind of stuff. I've always found they're not really a good tenant. They're almost like a buyer. Mm -hmm. Like if they're really pushing me on things, on how much this property is worth and, you know, the rent isn't justified because of this property or something, I find there's just, it's just Mm -hmm. a sign that's just not going to work out. Right. You know, like if I get into any of those conversations, like someone trying to prove how smart they are to me in this Mm -hmm. rental property. Yeah. yeah. I just find uh, it's not, that's just a bad sign. Mm -hmm. Um, And then how do you do uh, at the open house? How do you handle I go by gut feel a lot. Mm-hmm. How, do you, how are you reading yeah, people? I mean, I think I'm a pretty good judge of character, but ultimately it's that credit score that, man, you you can't hide from that. So I've had like the most pleasant young couples, you know, with very decent children um, beside them behaving well-mannered and they're, everybody's well-dressed. And then lo and behold... So Mike's judging the kids. N- no, well, yeah, it's a good <laughs> indication of how the parents will, will be. But... Uh, yeah, and um, they had cash in hand, first and last month's rent. They gave it to me. Then when I did a credit check, it was absolutely horrendous. So, I mean, yeah, you definitely want to go off gut, but also that credit check is huge, huge. And then I'll, if I can, I'll try to watch the vehicle that they pull up in as well. I, I, I don't mean, is it a, a, a newer vehicle? I mean, just is it something that's got a bunch of dents and missing hubcaps and weather stripping hanging down the side that they've beat up? Because if they are beating up their own vehicle, there might be a slight chance that they might not take as good of care as of your houses that you would like. And, and so how are you doing that? Let's just discuss mm-hmm. a straight regular rental. Mm-hmm. Um, how are you doing that transition from someone viewing the property mm-hmm. to then are you, is it an application? Like what's yeah. your transition to application? Yeah. So greet them at the door, have them possibly sign in on the sign in sheet. Hey, take a look at the house. If you have any questions, I'll be hanging out in the kitchen They'll walk around. Once they come in, I want to get to know them first. So what do you guys think of the house? And they'll let you know. And are you guys uh, living in the area? And if it could be yes or no. And if they are, if you don't mind me asking, how much are you paying in rent? You know, People will divulge this information. This is not, you know, they're pretty good with that. And if it's rent that's comparable to what I'm asking for the property, they may be a good selection. So then, yeah, from there, I'll guide them on to the, towards the application that they cannot leave the house with. So if they're interested in the house, they have to fill out an application on the spot because as we know, we do this in the class as well. We teach the investors that once one tenant leaves with the application, everyone's going to leave with the application. So even if they say, you know, this is great. I'm going to go home. I'll, I'll fill this out and I'll email it to you. They'll just say, you know, what? I'm really sorry. There's other people coming out. I have limited amount of these applications. So you know how to get a hold of me. Just shoot me an email and I'll happily uh, email you an application. They'll never email you. Like those are people that just for whatever reason, they didn't want to tell you that they weren't interested and just want to take an application and go. Both Nick and I have been in little tug of wars with our piece of paper application <laughs> before where someone's like, I'll just take this with me. And we're like, right. no, no, we need this here. We don't have that many. Yeah. Like you said, we're expecting more people. Right. And it's our way of just getting them off the fence. Like, yeah, tell us because we know if you just take it, like you said, they're not going to follow up. Yeah. Or if they sit there and fill it out. OK, there's a chance. Right. But they've wanted to take it. And I remember having my hand on two corners of the paper <laughs> and they have their hands on the paper. And it's like they pull at it. Then I pull at it back. <laughs> then they pull at it. I pull at it back. We're like, no, I need the paper. Yeah. And finally, I went and get the paper but then right. i know yeah i know they're not filling it out yeah. and cross them off my list because there's something i wanted to share when you are following up with all your leads both of us and mike i don't know how you do this right now but we used to just get a blank piece of printer paper from the printer mm-hmm. and just write the property address at the top and while we're in showing mode right we would just write down all the leads that were like active like actively mm-hmm. engaged with us right and then i would put little notes next to them like you know right. they're going to be there thursday or they're going to be there another day or can't make it thursday it. and i would also put how many times i followed up with them because if i followed up nick nick and i both would never just follow up with them once so like for example um you know how we said to call the day before or the day of if we didn't hear from them we didn't leave a message the first time i mean if it's a text Mm -hmm. we would ask for a response but if we didn't get the response or um we didn't get them live on the phone 
we would follow up a second time and yeah. I would just use check marks. Mm -hmm. So I would just put check mark, meaning I followed up once, yeah. check mark uh, again if I followed up twice. Right. And then if um, after that, sometimes I'd go to a third if I yeah. really thought it was a good lead. Right. Um, and that was it. So it was just mm -hmm. my way of tracking how many times I followed up with them mm -hmm. um, before I gave up on that particular yeah. lead. Yeah, but another thing, and you were very successful at this one time too, is you, somebody may ha may ask. So they've seen your ad, they reach out, hey, is this house still available? And you say yes, and you try to coordinate a time to show the property, and they have seem to have gone MIA. So what we'll do is if we know we're showing the house, say, tomorrow at 6 p.m. anyways, we'll fire off one last email or text message or voicemail it's message saying, Mary. hey, it's the yeah, Hail Mary. <laughs> sorry we, ha we haven't been able to co communicate or connect. I'm going to be at the house tomorrow at 6 p.m. I'd love for you to come by, see if you like the house. And you had a particular incident in Kitchener where they still didn't respond, came to the house. They were the signed, up. signed up. They yeah. were the only ones who yeah. showed up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't even going to go, yeah. but my Hail Mary went out and I'm yeah. like, well, if somebody shows up. Yeah. And you know, it's always those nights where you're like, oh, do yeah. I really want to go? Yeah. It's already dark out. It was your first showing too on that property. First showing. So yeah. many we've done in our first showing where we yeah. really thought we were the champions of yeah. the world. And then you get the other <laughs> properties where it takes you so many times to fill it and you're like, I know nothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had one in, in Cambridge and uh, I remember the first couple came in, didn't like the house. Second lady came in and uh, she offered me her wedding ring plus cash. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't married at the time. Didn't know how much wedding rings would cost. I should have probably went with that deal. But then I went with the third couple that came in that were a young professional couple and uh, they just had a bit of a better story. Yeah, and, got and, it. And got it. It's history. always shocking how, when you're renting out a property how much of a life story you get from people. Oh, yeah. You yeah, know, like why? Up. Totally. Yeah. It's, it was. It's, it is eye-opening. When we first started doing this, yeah. and Nick and I were much younger in our 20s and you had like older people telling yeah. us like their whole financial situation and we're like, holy smokes, yeah. man. But that goes back to your, your uh, advice on try to talk to people. Like it's much better than trying to do this over email or text message because that can come across very cold. People are may read your email or, or uh, text message differently than how you're trying to communicate. So. Totally. And even when I followed up, I would always tell people, like I remember following up this one time in the fall, it was around Halloween. And I remember telling people, hey, look, I'm going to be out there, you know, and the reason I'm going to be out there at seven is I'm going to get, at, I had to get my son's Transformer costume. So I'm going to get the, his costume. And mm -hmm. then after I pick up that costume, I'm going to come out to the house. So I was purposely throwing out these things that I had, you know, insinuating I had children and I was mm -hmm. prepping for Halloween, just trying to make myself like not a landlord and yeah. more just like some other guy who's just going to be at the property. And it, yeah. it was less intimidating, I found. And I got much better response yeah, when I was sure. just, you know, sharing my personality through those follow ups. That's huge. Yeah, just being personal at the property. The last thing you want to do is go into your rental property, especially if you're a male in like a three piece suit coming across as a used car salesman, trying to sign up a, a tenant. And I found people t uh, talk to you more when you're dressed more casually. Yeah. I would never want to go in a dress shirt. Like exactly. even if I was in a dress shirt and pants, yeah. I would never want to go that way. Exactly. Just because you yeah. get less information. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and it's all those little comments like you're saying, yeah. where, excuse me, you really get a feel mm -hmm. for the person. Right? Yeah, yeah, there's been times where I do not wear a very expensive watch, but my wife has very good taste and it does look like an expensive, I'll take off my watch. And I'm going to make sure, yes, I'm in t-shirts Are you trying to say you jeans. buy cheap watches that look better than most people's watches? That I splurge actually, on the no, coffee, cheap out nice on the watches. Yeah. <laughs> Get good is quality that a Costco, coffee. Is that a Costco watch right there? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't maybe. go that far. But <laughs> no. What do you mean no, that no. far? Okay, I got maybe, a gift maybe. for my 40th birthday from Ruben from Costco. <laughs> do you know that? <laughs> Well, no, my 40th no. birthday he got me. It was actually a really nice watch. I'm like, dude, where'd you get this? He's like, I got a Costco oh for you. <laughs> oh, man, where he gets his coffee beans. Oh, but uh, no, but no, we dude, also those say. Those are stale coffee beans <laughs> from winners, man. Know. That's right. <laughs> oh, man. But also we say, yeah, so when you're showing the property, definitely go in casual. To you, you, We're ultimately people helping people, and you don't want to come across as a salesperson. And if you don't have a kid, borrow a kid. Because often these are younger families coming in. They'll just relate to you better. That's a joke. But uh, it does work. Yeah. We've had investors bring their children out while they're filling homes. I, and we, it goes really well We sometimes. had these one, two young brothers that were trying to fill a property up uh, in Hamilton. And they lived in Mississauga. They were making the journey over to Hamilton for this property. They couldn't fill this property with a tenant. Um, and we couldn't understand why. So we finally 
go with them on like one Saturday morning. And these guys have balloons outside the front of the house. <laughs> they had donuts in the house. They had coffee machine. And but then they also in the in the family room, like right in the living room. You know when you open up the front door and the living room is kind of like part of that main entrance. Yeah, there? yeah. They had a table where if you expressed interest in the property, one of the brothers sat down and he sat. You sat on one side. He sat on the other That's side. Trouble. And interviewed you. Yeah. Oh geez. He was like interviewing people in the living room. They were petrified <laughs> yeah. by this point, and they were so formal right. about it. Everyone leaped, but they did re- legitimately have people. Yeah. sit down and go oh through an interview goodness. process with, and they couldn't find out why they couldn't figure out why they weren't uh, signing up a, a tenant I'm like guys you guys like look like a used car sales lot here like, this is like ridiculous be a little bit more oh. casual in the whole process yeah, right? yeah for sure but uh, okay so you get people they look around the house then you give them a paper based app Are you, what about yeah. some of the online services for credit check like are you using yeah good, is that, for sure yeah can you walk me through what's that process looking I've like I've been using Neighborly lately so uh, Neighborly's free um, and then can you describe, yeah. yeah, what are you getting off Neighborly? Yeah, so... Um, it's just Neighborly.com. Neighborly.com. The tenant actually uh, is the catalyst of that particular application. So they go there. Sorry, no, no, no. You sorry, go there, I go there. Yeah, that's right. Send it to their email yeah, address. Yeah, I got to put in the property address. That's right. And then I send them a link. They click that link, fill out some information, upload their ID. I think it's their driver's license and some pay stubs, stuff like that. And then Neighborly will come back with a credit report and all this other... Um, all these other details on like what's the likelihood that they'll be able to afford rent and whatnot. But however, I found, so one of the most recent properties I filled in Stony Creek, very first showing, I had seven families come out. I had a few families fill out the neighborly uh, credit report. The likelihood of them being able to afford rent seemed to be on each individual applicant as opposed to the group. group. Yeah. Cause in this case it was mom and dad, their daughter and her husband, and then that couple's daughter, which was only like two years old. So they were t- neighborly was reporting as an individu- kind individual. Of, kind now of maybe, property were you filling there? A four, uh, when, when, a four level back split. Four it's level a, back yeah, split. It's a oh, so did it have, yeah. have like two separate living spaces? Yeah, 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 yeah. Those are big yeah. properties. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Deceiving from the outside, but yeah, large once you get inside. But, um, oh, and they've been great too. And that's another thing we're seeing multiple generations living together yeah, more and now, more just to yeah. afford rent. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's that's a huge trend that yeah. we're seeing. So yeah, so on the neighborly side, just because I haven't been on the tenant side to fill out that application, I don't know if they maybe mistakenly didn't click on something where they could have applied as a group, but they were applying individually. Anyways, what I wanted to see was their credit report, and everybody came back clean. And okay, but and yeah, there's tenantverification.com, rentcheckcorp.com. There's certain, which is c e r t n dot c o, which mm-hmm. I know some of the property managers we use use like certain. Yeah. I think that one's a more paid for, a more expensive service. Yeah, but that one also has social media links. So what would you do in this case? A tenant says, "But I have my credit report. Here it is." I still got to check. Yeah. I mean, okay. it could be Same. old. Same. I tell them, hey, thank yeah. you, because uh, some of them are, are sensitive. Fraudulent, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm like, hey, look. And I'll just say, we've seen so much. Yeah. I mean, thank you for this. Yeah. But in order to qualify for this particular property, yeah. I have to pull yeah. it myself. Yeah, yeah, good. And you need permission to pull it. That's why you go through like a neighborly, by the way, is N-A-B-O-R-L-Y.com, neighborly, or just mm-hmm. Google that up. Um, and even when we were using paper-based applications, we would have a second page if our if it was one of our mortgage brokers maybe mm-hmm. pulling their credit for us. Mm-hmm. They needed to sign that second page that the mortgage broker gave us, giving the mortgage broker authority mm-hmm. to pull credit and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and we just explained to them, sorry, you know, yeah. I, I, I need to pull it myself. I need to see it myself. I need... Um, and, and and I need to see the credit score. The credit score in mortgage in the mortgage land, anything. And Mike, I don't know wh- mm-hmm. what you think of this, but uh, for a while we were using six eighty or above mm-hmm. was always like a credit. Yeah. So if your credit yeah. was six eighty or above, yeah. and the reason we always use that is if you, that was your credit score, mortgage brokers and bankers could always get you like the best mortgage programs available in Canada. Mm-hmm. Anything below that was starting to get into poorer credit. And then if you were like in the 400s or something, then you're like really like, holy smokes, we're like scary, really yeah. bad credit. And we yeah. would also look for things like any judgments on the credit report. Like if they had child support payments that they were missing, mm-hmm. you know, um, cause you can see like court judgments will come up on their credit report. Yeah. There were some things that were just like flags to us, mm-hmm. you know, and that kind of stuff was one of them too, missing child support payments yeah. and, and things like yeah. that would come up on their credit. Mm -hmm. Um, And then the other thing we would look at is that their income as a family was three times the rent. Mm -hmm. That was always just kind of like our rule of thumb. So like if we were asking 1800 bucks a month or, you know, if uh, if I round up to 
2000 it was just six thousand dollars had to be the gross family income right yeah. which that's the perfect scenario mm -hmm. and if someone came in a bit less of you know of course maybe we were willing to do it with, do that with them if they had good credit and the whole bit yeah but that's kind of our rule of thumb we we're just like the banks in that regard mm -hmm. um but we were looking at all the family income yeah. So if these apps gave it to us independently, we will add it up mm -hmm. and all their income sources. So if they were getting, you know, help from the government with some payments or whatever it is, it's all of it. And it's mm -hmm. gross, not net. Yeah. So it's the it's the pre-tax total gross income. Yeah. Um, any thoughts around that? Is that? No, I think that's, yeah, it's bang on. And we've had instances where uh, people are new to the country. So it's not necessarily that they have bad credit. They don't have credit. So in those cases, sometimes we've been able to negotiate where they're paying six months up front or a year up front. I know one of the girls on our team had uh, a year up front for a Hamilton property just last week. It's great. It's so good. We, friend, and we, and yeah. over the years, well, how many investors have we seen get like two years, three yeah. years? And we're always like, yes, if somebody offers you two or three years yeah, up front, yeah. the answer is always yes. Yeah. I will take that right, right. now. Thank you very much. Yeah. Especially yeah. if it's in a big bank draft or something. Right. Like that. right. <laughs> yeah. But, um, okay. And then I just want to explain something on the student rental side. We, uh, it's just a point of interest, the lease agreement on a student rental, we rent out the house as one house to students and everybody is on the single lease agreement. That way, to the insurance companies, to the bank, it's not like a boarding house or a rooming house. It is rented out as one house, everybody on one lease. Um, and then speaking of that, the transition from, so Nick, uh, Nick, just called you Nick, Mike, mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the you check their credit, so you go back and forth with one of these apps, mm -hmm. and then um, the, how do you transition to the actual signing of the lease? So you get somebody to go fill out neighborly. Mm -hmm. Do you have two or three people calling, uh, go filling out neighborly? Have you chosen mm -hmm. one person that you like to fill it out? Or, so, no, no, no. Multiple okay, tenants. So multiple tenants. Yeah. And then you've selected the person, gut feeling, right. credit score yep, looks yep, good, yep. everything looks good. Yep. What's your next step at that point? Yep. Call them back saying, you know what? Spo I'll always say I spoke with my... Because at the house, I'm going to say, you know what? I have to speak with my, in this case, my wife or my partner. Maybe if you're not married at the time, um, I'll get back to you within 24 hours. And if everything checks out, hey, you know what? Spoke with my partner and you guys seem to be like great fit for the home. Are you still interested? Yes, we are. Great. The next step is for us to meet up. I'll need to collect first and last month's rent and sign a lease. More often than not, though, now they're sending e-transfers. So you don't even have to meet up. Yeah, then before we out. always had to meet up. Some Canadian yeah. entire parking lot, Tim Hortons. <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, let's meet up for yeah. the money. Yeah, have the lease. They sign off the lease. Uh, now I'm doing that electronically as well. There's several apps out there for that. Okay, because um, you're using the standard, because we all have to use the new, uh, not new, it's been yeah. up for a while now, but the new uh, Ontario, Ontario Standard Lease yeah. Agreement. So yeah. you're just uh, doing that digitally mm -hmm. as a PDF. Right. Emailing right. to them. They fill it. You filled it out. Right. They sign it. Correct. And send it back to you. Yeah. And they each transfer you the money. Correct. Yeah, damn. Things yeah. have gotten so much easier. Yeah. And then um, on or before the day they move in, so first and last month's rent had to clear. Like we were not taking a check, like a first month's rent at the house, like a handwritten check and then handing over the keys because that money hasn't cleared. So you want to make sure that money's clear. So either bank draft, cash, or e-transfer, meet them at the house. You've now, as the owner, have confirmed that the tenant has already put the utilities into their name, the tenant has tenant insurance, and now you're able to hand over the key. Holy shit, dude, you just covered so much there. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you have the money, yeah. the lease is signed, mm -hmm. the utilities, you are calling the utility companies and saying, checking that the utilities are in their name right. as of a certain date. Correct. Correct? Yeah. So hydro, uh, gas, hydro, mm -hmm. water heater rental, sometimes you can get it put in, sometimes you can't. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Insurance. Uh, insurance. Mm -hmm. That they have tenants insurance? Correct. Yeah. You're forcing them to get tenants insurance? I've asked and it's never been an issue. Yeah, okay. But I also let them know, like, hey, guys, the insurance that I have is going to cover the house. The content insurance for you, or the insurance for you, it's only going to be about 15 bucks a month, and it's going to cover all your contents in the event something were to happen to the house. And I've never had a tenant have an issue. And the that. benefit of that uh, to you as the investor, and check with your insurance guy, guy or girl, um, is that if there's ever, you know, if they're cooking something on the stove and their fire breaks out, mm -hmm. typically the tenant's insurance or the content's insurance usually will cover mm -hmm. that stuff. So it will fall under that insurance policy, not your insurance policy, right. which could be a benefit. Again, check with your insurance company on that, that particular thing. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And then I just want to, 
just before we go to the next step here, I just want to re- just mention at this point that so many people have tried to rent out properties over the years, and we will sometimes get feedback like, you can never rent out a property in Kitchener or Barrie or Clarington at the price that you guys are saying. And usually that response is, is coming from them running an ad on Kijiji, the people have not been out to the property so they don't understand how great your property is. They've just seen some pictures and your pictures aren't that good. And you explain how much you're you know, asking in rent and they're, they're kind of criticizing you over the phone, over text, through Kijiji, however it is. And the investor, especially if they're a new investor, gets completely frustrated and thinks that they aren't gonna get the rent mm-hmm. that they're hoping to get. And our response to that is always get the people to the property, meet them at the property. The property itself does the selling. It's the area, the street, the street appeal of the property or the condo. It's the thing that does the selling. Get them to the property to just accept that you're not gonna be able to get the rent that you're thinking because you've gone back and forth through text message Mm -hmm. or Kijiji's communication or whatever. That's weak. And I remember one time in uh, we were we had an investor that bought a property, and Nick was dealing with this particular investor. This guy actually called Nick a liar. And if anyone calls Nick, a li- there is no worse thing to call Nick Karadza than a liar, or to say that something he said isn't accurate. Because in this case, I remember the, the office door was closed. This is when we were in the closet, uh, not in the closet. <laughs> no, that doesn't sound right. We are. <laughs> This is when our, our actual office was a closet yeah. and uh, we were working out of this closet. And I remember the closet door was closed and Nick was in the in this closet. That was our office. And he was just yelling back and forth. This Russian guy was just freaking out, saying what Nick had uh, said that the rent that he was going to be able to get was totally not, not right. And we always stand by our word. And Nick committed to renting out the property. Uh, our, when, he, when he says himself, it was him and I together, but uh, himself. And we would do it for free just to prove to this guy mm-hmm. that, uh, that he could uh, rent it out. And uh, on the very first showing we go up there, multiple we get multiple people at the property. We rent out the property that mm-hmm. night. Yeah. And I remember it vividly because it was a friend of mine I was helping on another property in the area and he was struggling a little bit trying to do the same thing over the phone. And I said, hey, look, I'll take over your rental because it was a friend I didn't want to listen to him kind of complain about not finding a tenant. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I'll take it. I had multiple people. I think it was the day before Halloween. It was out in the fall. And uh, we rented out my friend's property and this Russian guy's property one night with cash, I remember the guy, when I went to the house Nick was renting out for this guy from where I was, I had cash in my hand as a deposit from the other property. The, the Russian guy was there at the house. The garage door was open. He was prepping a for sale sign. He was getting ready. Oh he had bought goodness. the house like a month before. Yeah. He was getting ready to sell it, which he would have lost money on the commissions and the real estate mm-hmm. fees. He had paid land transfer already. Jeez. He was literally getting ready to sell it and he was gonna sell it privately to try to save money, right. which was probably gonna be a disaster. Mm-hmm. And uh, Nick that night rented out his property for the price he said he would rent it out. Right, yeah. And I'll just never forget that. When we asked the guy about it, he finally admitted that he was trying to do all the qualification over the phone because he mm-hmm. was too lazy mm-hmm. to go out to the property. That yeah, always, yeah. You're, it's just you never- touched on a good point. Yeah, like you can do it. We know some investors who have some great systems with Facebook mm-hmm. ads and they're pre-qualifying them before they get out to the property. Yeah. It is possible, but you have to be skilled and you need to know what you're doing. Yeah. If you're new to this, let the property do the selling. Right, yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, we, we had a property recently in uh, St. Thomas where the investor paid a little over 300 for the property. He put an ad up on Kijiji. Um, I think the ad was 1950 per month. And uh, I called him because I was with another investor out there recently. And I, and I, I called him and said, hey, because it was a very similar house. I knew we would get the same amount of rent. And I'm like, what did you rent that property for again? Was it, I think I said 1990. He goes, no, 1950. I go, did anybody say it was too much? And he goes, yeah. And I go, where? I got the house. He goes, no, on Kijiji. I go, well, what did they say at the house? He's like, they didn't say anything. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it was done. First, and I know I'm setting the bar high here and I apologize, but it was first showing again. Yeah, you are such an asshole. I know, I know. I cannot I know. believe you're saying Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but it was actually from a person from Alberta. Yeah, yeah, quite a few families out there, but eventually. Oh, moving was, back to Ontario. This particular family, yes. Yeah, got it, yeah, got it. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. But yeah, so yeah, it, it's funny. People will try to negotiate online before they've even seen the house. 
and saying it's too much. They haven't even seen the house yeah. yet. And, what, and, what are they negotiating and on? And if you and the investor try to negotiate at that point, you just lose. Like yeah. you're not, yeah. you don't have any leverage <laughs> on this thing. Yeah. So, uh, and then I, I remember at one point, just going to your point about filling properties. At one point, we filled seven properties in a row first showing. Mm-hmm. And I remember uh, patting ourselves on the back like, oh my gosh. We like I guess we're investment experts. Yeah, <laughs> we, yeah. we know yeah. we're doing. Then it was JP Hunt right. sold a property. So JP Hunt is a, one of the coaches here at Rockstar works with uh, investors, and he was just getting started with us. And uh, he sold a property to an investor who bought this property but couldn't get out there. So JP Hunt was taking the responsibility of finding a tenant, mm-hmm. and he was struggling finding a tenant. He went up there a few times, and. Um, and I remember thinking, you know, that we had just fill, filled seven in a row. One of them, we forgot the keys. This was, I've forgotten the keys before, but this wasn't me. This was Nick forgot the keys. Right. Nick showed the property from the outside through the windows. <laughs> and we signed oh. leases. Oh. That's how confident we were getting. Yeah. We're like, hey, just look through the windows. Yeah. This is perfect for you. <laughs> we signed leases. Oh, so at man. this point, we're like, I guess we can do no wrong. Yeah. We get to this property and I'm like, JP, I'll show you how it's done. Just watch what I do. You know, listen, man, I got this figured out. Just watch. I'll teach you. I'm the expert here. It took us two freaking months. Yeah. <laughs> that feels like forever oh, sometimes. When, when, when you're going done, up twice a week yeah, yeah, for exactly. two months, yeah. I was and starting to doubt winter? myself. Was it winter? Thankfully, it wasn't oh, okay, winter. Good, good. I was starting to doubt that myself. Makes it even longer. So, yeah, if you're listening to this and you're an investor, just know that we have filled many properties like the first day, yeah. but there's always that. And you know what? It's often the property that you think is going to rent out so fast. Yeah, yeah. The property you think you won't get a lot of response to, you always get a lot of response to. The ones that are like the perfect properties that you're going to rent out no problem always yeah. take forever. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it took us two months, d- d- desperate at yeah. that point, running ads. We started doing yard directional signs on top of our yard mm-hmm. sign, more stuff on in newspapers back then. Yeah, We finally rented out. And I remember being so humbled by the experience thinking, I'm never just going to take this for granted. Like you can fill yeah. properties in one day, yeah. but sometimes it's not you. Sometimes it's just the situation and you're just, it's just going to take some time. Yeah. So if you're struggling to fill a property, it, it sometimes you just hit those mm-hmm. and it's nothing about you or just just stick with the process yeah. turtle wins the race right. right just keep going yeah yeah so uh okay so mike so standard so they go to do some tenant verification.ca or certain or neighborly you give some of them a thumbs up you go back and forth and uh they fill out the lease the mm-hmm. ontario standard lease agreement if you don't right. have that you can just google that up and you can get it on the government websites now we all use the same lease but there are a couple points here i just want to make sure that everyone's clear on the reason what Mike said is really important that you want the money in hand before you give the keys because in, in Ontario, if you give the keys over to a tenant, they are in your property. So if they give you a check for first and last month's rent and you think it's going to clear the bank, we've seen this many times, Mike, that someone will give the mm-hmm. keys, mm-hmm. then they will go to the bank and the check bounces. At that point, you can't just pull them out of the property. They are now covered by the Tenant Act in Ontario, Mm -hmm. just like anyone else, even though the first and last month's rent has not cleared. So I just want to just really harp on that point. Make sure you have certified funds, bank draft, e-transfer in hand before you give the keys. This also applies if even if you don't have the lease agreement completely filled out and signed. In mm-hmm. Ontario, is, and, and you can check this with your lawyer or your paralegal, so don't take my word for it or our word for it, but in Ontario, once keys have been handed over, even if the lease has not been signed, they are now covered by the Tenant Act, and you're going to have to go through the tenant process, and we'll talk about some of that, to get them out of your property. Mm-hmm. So be very careful. Multiple people we've met over the years have made this mistake. It's a brutal mistake to make. Yeah, and, and really there's no need for it anymore just because of the fact that everyone, I don't know of anyone that can't do any transfer nowadays. Before when it was just, hey, check or cash or bank draft, sure, it could be a Sunday, the banks aren't open. What are you going to do? They don't have cash. Nowadays, there's no excuses. No, ex- yeah, yeah. I, I agree. And in Ontario, unfortunately, the only thing we can collect is first and last month's rent. Mm-hmm. So you can't get like a secure, I think some people right. are under the impression they can get security mm-hmm. deposits because they hear of these things and stuff. It's first and last month's rent is what we're allowed to ask for in, in Ontario. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now lease is signed. Oh, there's one other thing on the lease. Uh, Mike, we see this a lot, is that people will say, well, again, I'm getting my tenants to cut the grass mm-hmm. and I've discount, I've put on the lease that it's like, the, the, you know, rent's $1,800, but it's yeah. minus 100 mm-hmm. because they're cutting the grass. From all our experience, it's better to keep the lease as is at 1800 
and have a separate agreement or contract, if you want to call it a contract, with the tenants to cut the grass for $100 a month that you're going to pay them. Mm -hmm. Keep it separate because if you ever go to the tenant board with your lease, the adjudicator at the tenant board from our experience is always going to look at whatever the lowest option on your lease is. So if your lease says like, 1800 you know minus 100 and in brackets you put something like you know for cutting the grass every month or something Mm -hmm. they're going to look at that lease as it's been our experience anyway as 1700 Mm -hmm. not 1800 so keep your lease pure like just keep it as a clean agreement and if you're going to have to do any other discounts or something make it a separate contractor agreement where you pay them for the service Mm -hmm. you can talk to your lawyer talk to a good paralegal about this but that would be our recommendation. Mm-hmm. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, and then um, I was uh, the only other thing I was going to mention is pictures of the property. Mm-hmm. Yeah, There's apps to do it now, mm-hmm. but uh, you could just take pictures of the property and get the tenants to initial that the, that's the state of the property as they move in and mm-hmm. attach those pictures to the lease. And the reason I'm saying that is a lot of people are scared of damage. And if a tenant damages a property, it's very hard to get a judgment for that unless you have pictures of the state of the property before they move in. Right. So if you're scared of that, get that um, those pictures and get people to initial it. You can do it online. I know there's a bunch of apps that do this kind of stuff now mm-hmm. and, and stuff, but you can also go old, you know, old school, just take pictures on your iPhone, drop them into a document, attach that to the lease mm-hmm. and include that as part of the lease. Yeah. Yeah. Anything, any other around the lease, any other little details? I mean, there's a lot we can talk about, the, but true, just at a high yeah, level. It's a podcast in itself. But I think the whole process, keeping on the theme of filling your property, one of the things that we're really good at as a group here at Rockstar um, is with the coaches on Monday. When we're going over our investors and how they're doing with filling our their properties, we can quickly decipher if there is an issue, where that issue is happening. For instance, if they're doing what we say in regards to the ads and the ad placements and the way the ad should be posted, but not getting responses, we know there's something wrong with the ad. So then we can help them and critique their ad. Sometimes people are thinking their ad's up on Kijiji, but it might be actually in the wrong section or it's actually not there because they've done something that violates Kijiji's policy, i.e. they put too many ads up of the same property and Kijiji has <laughs> blocked them and removed their spammer. ads. Yes, yeah, spammer, yeah. Or your ad's up, you're getting great responses, but you're not getting people to the house. So now, in all likelihood, there's something going on with the conversation there. So people have reached out and the investor might be making some kind of mistake on the appointment. Or they get people uh, that do come to the house, but now they're not getting applications filled out. So again, this is something that we all work on individually with our investors. But uh, what we find in generally is a 50% breakdown moving through the process. So if 20 people say they're going to uh, come, roughly you should get in and around with 15 to 20 coming out. But of those people that come out, about half of those should be filling out applications. About half of those you should be collecting deposits or, or last month's rent from. And then of that batch, maybe one or two are good for tenant selection, roughly. So when you get deposits from people you don't choose, you're just emailing the money back yeah. afterwards? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and now you can, it's it's tracked too because you've done the transfer back to them. So that's another thing that we have at the property is a deposit form that we've collected yeah, a deposit it. for them. Okay, so um, if I was just to step back for a second before we get to actually quickly, we'll just cover the eviction process really quickly. You run the ads, mm-hmm. you follow up with people, you do op- don't do open house strategies, typically do appointments at the property, mm-hmm. um, set up the property properly, um, do a credit check, yeah. Use the Ontario Standard Lease Agreement. Don't hand over the keys until you have money. Right? Utilities, insurance. The utilities and insurance. Yeah. What are you asking for proof? Of, are you just asking, hey, did you get contents insurance? Do they yeah, actually give you proof? They'll fire of off the binder letter. Yes, yeah, so you'll see company. the binder letter. Yeah. Okay, sent over to you. Yeah. Um, then only then hand over the keys. If the lease expires, let's say you do a one month, sorry, a one year lease, just understand that in Ontario, even if you don't sign a new lease for another year, they go to um, what's called a month to month situation mm-hmm. where they can give you, now I'm blanking on this, but it's 60 days notice mm-hmm. yeah. um, to vacate the property. Mm-hmm. Um, and they are covered still by the Tenant Act. Um, you Just because they don't have a new lease doesn't mean you can just say, hey, get out of my property tomorrow. They are covered by the Tenant Act. If they're paying you rent and they don't want to leave, even without a new lease, they are entitled to stay mm-hmm. as long as they're paying you for as long as they want on a month to month basis. Yeah. The only conditions you can get them out of the property are um, you yourself 
moving into the property. Mm -hmm. I forget the notice, but you yourself moving into the property, you sell the house and the person who's buying the house is moving into it for themselves. Correct. They can't Uh, be renting it out. Yeah, they can't be renting it out. Um, And not inherit the tenant. Yeah, they have to inherit the tenants. Um, That's it? That's And I think major renovations. If you're going to do a substantial... But don't you have to offer it back to them? That's right. I think you do have to offer it back to them. I think you can adjust the rent, Mm -hmm. but you're right. We're going to bring Kelly back on here and talk about some legit paralegal stuff and dive into some of those things. But we're finding now more than ever, tenants do not want to leave because rents have escalated so rapidly beyond what we're allowed to, uh, as uh, landlords increase the rent, um, that uh, they don't want to leave. Because they're the, the next place that they're going to go to is that's similar is probably 100 200 $300, $400 more now. Yeah, it's insane. And before yeah. we saw what, like $25, $50 increases. Yeah, yeah. Now you leave, you're seeing a three. I shouldn't laugh. I yeah, mean, no. It's just the yeah. state of the real estate market. Yeah, yeah. We're going to go on a whole freaking rant about and the Bank of Canada and... That drives me crazy about these gurus lately. The new theme seems to be you shouldn't own your own home. You should own investment properties. And I'm like, we're on the other side of this. We see what happens to people that don't own their own home and then are tenants. And now all of a sudden the investor is going to sell for whatever reason. They're going to pull equity out of the home. It's just time in their life. And uh, now this poor tenant whose child is in that school district uh, has to leave, can't afford that area anymore. It's like you're changing lives here. First of all, these and the guys that uh, say like, that are I the guys. Like oh man, man that I pisses me you off. Usually don't get pissed off about anything. Oh. <laughs> yeah, these guys are flying private jets, telling people. It, I, it, I think it just resonates as people can't afford their own homes. It resonates well with them, right? Oh, don't worry about. Don't buy your own home. Buy rental properties. But it's the easiest home to qualify for. Your own personal home. Uh, ta- if you have kids, you're yeah. taking care of. You. I, I like thinking you have a place for your family. Yeah. Well, and then, then they say is, well, you know, do you really want to pay a mortgage? You want to really want to pay property tax? Yeah, do you really want to pay insurance? Yeah. But guess what? The landlord is passing those costs onto you. You're paying the landlord's mortgage, property tax, insurance. It's just ridiculous. Wow. Yeah. I've never really seen not, you get pissed off ever. Oh, man. that's not that's not cool. Yeah, for, for Mike to be speaking at this <laughs> level, this mild level of uh, pissed offness. Yeah. I don't know the, even know how I deviated that way, but no, yeah. No, 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 oh, I think yeah. just the cost of tenants right now is just it's 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 crazy. So yeah, yeah, totally. Um, okay, so yeah. uh, they're month to month. Okay, and then finally, once they're in the property, every check with your insurance company on how often the insurance company wants you to go by. Check if the if the property goes vacant. Check with the insurance company. Give them an update that the prop. Basically, talk to your insurer on anything to do with the property. Mm-hmm. If the property goes vacant, sometimes they want you to go by for mm-hmm. uh, you know while it's vacant. Even when the tenant's in there, they want you to go by a certain amount of times. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's twice a year. Sometimes it's four times a year, depending on the insurance company. Check with your insurance, all that kind of stuff. You actually can get insurance for damages you can get insurance for vacancy periods if you're nervous about it you yeah. always pay more missed rent yeah well yeah that kind of stuff yeah so just there are options out there more than maybe ever mm-hmm. for for investors there's even like airbnb type insurance policies now right, more yeah. and more stuff like that and then finally um the eviction process in ontario most people hate it but i actually don't mind it at all because i think it's pretty laid out like it's mm-hmm. not perfect yeah. but um if someone misses rent by you know one day you fill out an n4 form Mike, correct me if I go wrong here, but it's mm-hmm. 14 days. Yeah. They have to true up and pay you rent. Um, there are very strict processes in how the N4 is to be filled out and delivered. So follow the instruction form, which is very good. Just read it. So if you just Google up Ontario Tenant Act N4 form, something like that, you'll mm-hmm. find it. Um, if they don't pay at that point, you you can then fill out an L1, which is the form to get a date at the tenant board to... Um, possibly get an eviction mm-hmm. um then the the tenant board if you've never been if you've ever watched the people's court as a kid and you just want to have some fun one day find where one of these tenant boards are and just sit at the back of the room it's the most ridiculous <laughs> stuff people get all huffy and puffy about stuff and storm out of this thing but uh anyway you go there um if you have a property manager I want to get this straight because remember when you and I used to go representing yeah. Oh, yeah, investors sure. and we're not allowed in it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mike and yeah. I both used to go with investors yeah. when they were new and we would go and represent them at the yeah. tenant board until uh, I think years into it, one of the adjudicators told us like, who are you? Yeah. Like, why are you here? Yeah, you yeah. don't own the property. You're not a property management right. <laughs> manager. You're not allowed to be here. Caught in Kitchener doing something like that, but they let me off <laughs> like this time, but that's it. We were doing it as a service to yeah. investors because yeah. we're like, hey, don't be scared yeah. of the tenant board. No, I'll we'll go take with care you. Yeah, don't worry. It's yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah. But uh, um, you need a property manager. It's Actually, I don't even know if the property manager can go. I think they have to hire a paralegal. 
I think that's the only person. Nowadays, yeah. I think I'm you're pretty right. sure that's yeah. the thing. We'll check with Kelly when yeah. she comes on here. But you fill out the L1. There's a cost for it. I believe the last cost. 170. 170. Yeah. I don't know if it's at 190 yet. Mm-hmm. Whatever. It's something like that. Yeah. That'll get you a date at the uh, tenant board. If you get an eviction notice, usually, I mean, there's many exceptions to this stuff. They'll have about 11 days, whatever is the magical number, to mm-hmm. move out of the property. If they do not move out, you can take your eviction notice to the local courthouse and hire a sheriff for, I was 350 bucks. haven't done this in ages. Mm-hmm. And a sheriff, which I thought was going to be like Arnold Schwarzenegger, <laughs> which is not. It's like an older... Cowboy hat. Yeah, so, star badge. Yeah, total yeah. older dude in a Ford Taurus yeah. with a bulletproof vest <laughs> and a little sign on the dashboard, sheriff, okay. <laughs> parks at the curb. And it's his job to give you vacant possession of the property. Mm-hmm. Um, so there is a process in Ontario. Don't be scared of it. Get familiar no. with it. It's yeah. nothing to hold you back on. Um, but that's it. Mm-hmm. I think that's anyone can do this, especially with demand for properties where it's at. I don't think there's really a need to hire someone to fill a property. I mean, you can if Agreed. you're busy and you don't want to do it. Yeah, if you got a busy life or the property is a few hours away, maybe that's a different story. But yeah, if it's within, I'd say, an hour's radius, this is easy and easy. You shouldn't really worry about tenant calls. Like, you're not really getting those. And at this point, on a regular type of rental, how many times a week would you think someone should go out? Could they do it at once a week or did you say twice to a week? To fill a property? Yeah. Yeah, ideally twice a week. But if... Worst comes to worst, definitely every weekend. Yeah. And, yeah. and you'll get it done still. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Right the people now, that couldn't make it out during the week are now going to come on the weekends. Yeah, so you're just going to have more people come out now. Exactly. And and we are seeing this spillover effect in Ontario like never before. Yeah. So like communities outside of Toronto. So in Toronto, you're going to fill the property, any rental property mm-hmm. basically. And that has spilled over to all of the 905 area around Toronto. But now we're seeing even communities like... St. Catharines getting so busy that there's a spillover effect where Welland and Port Coburn right. are getting busy. Yeah, in London, in yeah. London, yeah, in London, we're seeing a spillover to St. Thomas. St. Thomas, mm-hmm. um, we've se- we saw a long time. We saw a spillover from the east side of the city over into like Clarington. You've been as far out east as Belleville, mm-hmm. looking at different properties all yeah. around Barry. We're seeing stuff spill over into Aurelia, and when I say spillover, I just mean the demand yeah. is so strong that it's spilling over into these other communities. Right. Yeah. So the demand in Ontario is just absolutely incredible. It really is. I think that's it. I think that was good. Yeah, you finished your your nitro. I'm, <laughs> I'm like two, two thirds of, of my cold roux. But uh, anyway, hopefully you found that useful. And uh, yeah, that's it. Hey everyone, so hopefully you enjoyed that talk. Listen, if you are interested in this kind of stuff and you want to learn more on how we are investing with investors here at Rockstar, you can go to CanadianRealEstateTraining.com, register for a seat at one of our introductory classes that are about 90 minutes long. We jam pack that class with as much information as humanly possible. So you can register for a seat at that class at CanadianRealEstateTraining.com. Until next time, your life, your terms.